Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today you're gonna learn all about the rules of hooks. Hooks are extremely powerful. They came with React 16.8 and with all of that power, we have to know how to use them in the correct way. So today I'm gonna teach you just that. Roll the intro. So today's video was made possible by our amazing friends over at Skillshare. If you want to go ahead and level up your React game and become a kick-ass developer in the year 2022, then check this out. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of people come together to take the next step in their creative journey. The thing I love about Skillshare is that there are no ads. They're always launching new premium classes and they also recommend really interesting classes. So before you know it, I'm actually no longer watching TV or Netflix. All I do is watch Skillshare while I'm actually eating my food. Most classes are under 60 minutes, so they should be able to fit any schedule, whether you're super busy or you've got a little bit more time on your hands. I've actually gone ahead and dropped the React Basics 101 one entire class on Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description are going to get a free month worth of premium Skillshare and you're going to be able to with that access the React Basics which I've uploaded. On top of that you're going to get access to thousands and thousands of courses available on Skillshare's platform. I've actually been checking out a amazing video editing class at the moment by Ali Abdel where I was actually able to find out how I could use my iPad to add animated handwriting in into my videos to level up my production value. And now I'm making the best use out of my iPad as well as leveling up my Final Cut production game. So this is just an example of the amazing value that I've got since I've signed up at Skillshare. And if you guys want to go ahead and benefit from this just like I have, then go ahead and remember the first 1000 people to go ahead and grab that link are gonna get one free month of Skillshare premium, which means that you can access my React Basics 101 class. It's completely free, you have nothing to lose. and then. After that, you can go ahead and continue if you're enjoying what you see on Skillshare. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another lesson. Today, I'm going to be talking about the rules of hooks. All right now, what the heck are hooks? Why are hooks so damn useful, right? And there are a few rules that we need to use or need to remember when we're using hooks. And these come under the rules of hooks. There are two rules that we need to remember and account for whenever we use hooks like the use effect or the use state hook. And they're very, very important to ensure that React functions correctly when we're using these powerful features known as hooks, okay? So firstly, before we jump in, I wanna show you a little handy website called use hooks. Now here is a basically a website of recipes. So they're React hook recipes. And if you didn't know, you can actually create your own React hooks. So here you have a bunch of different hooks available to use that people have created and they are they're constantly being added and tweaked. So I'd recommend giving this a read and check out after this lesson. So that's usehooks.com and that's going to help you out a bunch. Right. So before we get started, I want to inform you guys what is possible with hooks. OK, so previously we talked about hooks and we talked about how we can use the use state hook to actually incorporate state inside a functional component. Now, before when React was first born, let's say you only had class based components. Class based components allowed us to have state inside of a component, which is very powerful. Remember in the previous lesson, we, talk, we talked about how state is like the memory of a component. And when you refresh, it's non-persistent, it disappears. Now, previously, the only reason why we didn't use functional components is because we couldn't have state inside of a functional component. And we couldn't actually use things like the lifecycle methods, which only existed inside of a class based component. But React hooks came to save the day. And now we have the use state hook for state functionality inside of a functional component. And we have the use effect hook to replace all of the lifecycle functions inside of a class-based component. So without further ado, let's jump into the code and I'm gonna explain and break down the two rules that you must follow whenever you use hooks. So let's jump into the rules of hooks. It's got quite a cool name to it. So the first rule of hooks, only call hooks, use state and use effect as examples, only call them at the top level. Now, what do we mean by this, right? So I've got a few examples down here. So we've got three examples over here. And the first one that we, we talked about is only call the hook at the top level. Now, what do we mean by the top level? So here is an example of calling a correct hook. Okay, so it's at the top level. We have our function, our app. This is our functional component. And at the top level, we have the use state 
call here we have a use state here and then we have another one here use state which just generates a random number between zero and 100 that's going to come in handy in just a sec now what does it mean to define this at the top level so for example if we were going to define this at any level which is not the top level whether or not it is inside of a loop a condition or a nested function it would break the something known as the call order so what we need to remember is whenever we use hooks inside of React, the way that React does it under the hood is it essentially carries a call order and it has an order in which it calls the hooks. Now, it doesn't matter if we swap this around with this. That's not the order I'm talking about. What I'm actually referring to, so for example, we should not call hooks inside of loops, conditions, or nested functions. Okay, so the first example over here, this will break the call order and let's see why, right? Um, so we have a random number inside of our state. Okay. So every time we, the page re-renders, we'll get a random number generated. Okay. So what will happen is on the first render, let's say this number was, uh, 35. Okay. So the first number was 35 and then here we have a conditional, right? So we're already breaking that little rule. Shouldn't be using conditional with a, a use state inside of it. So here we're saying if the random number is greater than 50, then we have a, a variable called test, right? Now think about what happens with here. If the number was 35 on the first render, right? It's going to not be executed. So this is not going to get executed, right? And then we have a use effect afterwards. So let's think of it this way, okay? Let's give this an order. So let's say that this order, uh, imagine an array of call, like imagine when the program executes, it executes it in a certain order, okay? So let's just say that this was the uh, first element to render. So this one would be the first element. This one would be the second element. This one would be the third element to get called. And then we go down here and this one could potentially be the fourth element. This one could potentially be the fifth element. This one could potentially be the sixth element. And this one could potentially be the seventh element. Okay, so these are all the hooks that are getting triggered off. Okay. So you can see we've got a, a particular order that gets followed, okay? Now, one, two, and three are never going to change, okay? So even if we swap them around, it's fine because they always will remain in that consistent order. But let's look at number four, right? Four sometimes would get skipped, okay? So think about it. If, this, if a re-render occurs and this random number between zero and 100 is greater than 50, it will get called because if the number is greater than 50, then this line of code gets reached. That means everything kind of proceeds as normal. But if for any reason it goes below 50, it won't get called, which means that this technically would never get executed. So the first time that it's called, this value, um, let's say it was 55, would go ahead and get a will get called. So it would have a, a predictable call stack. Also, it would think it would have a predictable call stack. So that way, the next time it wouldn't think that number four in the call order is going to be this. And that's how React is clever. It, it remembers how to re-render things. So the next time, imagine that the number wasn't greater than 50. Now it thinks that it's going to be executing this, but instead it could potentially be executing, let's say, this one. Right, so it could potentially be executing this one, and this one it thinks is number four, but instead it's number five. Now this breaks React, right? So what we need in React is a predictable call order. So here you can see it's one, two, three, and that's always going to stay as one, two, three. But you can see here we have number four. Now number four isn't predictable. Why is it not predictable? Because sometimes random number could be greater than 50. Sometimes it might be less than 50. And every time we re-render, it's going to get a different value. So this is a bit hard to sort of say. So React can't actually predict. This is how React hooks functions. And without this function, without this predictability, it breaks the entire flow of how React works. So we cannot do this. We are not allowed to have this. So how do we fix this? We essentially go ahead and we remove this so firstly we're not allowed to have if we're defining state it should always be at the top level so now this one is actually a valid call okay so we fixed this one so this is now a valid call now for the second one conditional if we have a use effect a use effect is simply a piece of code which can get triggered off at various life cycles of the component um, which we'll explain in the next lesson if we have a use effect, then essentially if we have any conditional, it must go inside 
of the use effect itself. So you can have a conditional, but it has to go inside. So here, what we would actually want to do is have the use effect inside and get rid of the rest of it. So you can see now this is okay. All right. So this is actually okay to have this because what's going to happen is regardless of what happens, this is always going to be number five, right? This use effect will always be number five, All right? So now you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, and everything is going to remain in its position. There's no conditional, maybe this is number four, maybe this is number five, and React needs this guarantee to make sure that it works well with its hooks. Quick little tip, it's recommended that you use a linter plugin, so it's ESLint plugin React hooks, and by default, if you use Create React app, this is already installed, and what it will do is that if you ever have an error, like one of these rules being broken, so let's go ahead and save where we've got a rule broken over here, React will actually freak out and it will explain. It will say React hook use effect is called in a function testing, which is neither a React function component or a custom hook function. So if I go ahead and, and break one of the previous ones, so let's go ahead and have this one, for example, in a conditional block. So even if we had a very simple conditional block and we save it, now you can see React hook use state is called conditionally. React hooks must be called in the exact same order in every component render. And you can see here it says rules of hooks rules of hooks. So this is actually a rule which will actually catch out on a lot of things. So if you have used Create React App, chances are the, the compiler will scream at you if you get this wrong. So don't be afraid and in, in of like will I miss it? Will I not miss it? It's just something that is very important to know about. Right. So the next one we were talking about is the bad uh, example which is no nested function. So here we have remember we want to talk about having it on the top level, right? So here where we've got a nested function if you want to have a nested function, you're not allowed to have a use effect inside. If you can have a function inside of a use effect, so if you wanted to execute a function inside of a use effect, you can definitely do that. So I can go here and actually change this to have a inner call. So we can have an inner function which runs here like such. And then you can basically call your testing function inside. So this would have scope only inside of the use effect, but the example would work. So now that this would actually be a valid function. Okay, so this would be number six and that this one would work as expected. Okay, so what we can say here is that now we've corrected number six and number seven was a working example. Okay, so this was the first thing that we talked about. It has to be at the top level and you see what we actually did there is we got everything to the top level. So you see by fixing those issues, Everything is now at its top level. So what I'm going to do at this point is explain the second rule, okay? So you're not allowed to call hooks from regular JavaScript functions. So that was actually the final example, this one over here. So you can only call React hooks from a functional component or from a custom hook, okay? So custom hooks will be addressed in a upcoming lesson. But here we can actually see we have a React functional component and at the top here we have the use state call and we have a use effect here for example. All of this is being called inside of a React functional component. However, we cannot, remember that example we just demonstrated before, we cannot have a, let me do it a separate one down here, we cannot have a function for example, let's call this bad function, we cannot have a function, so let's actually do the old school way, we'll say function and we cannot have a function and then have a use effect or a use state call inside of there. So let's just have a blank use effect here and we just say console log test and let's see what happens here. So you see on line 48 it found it and it says react hook use effect is called in a function bad function which is neither a react functional component or a custom react function. Okay but if I was to go ahead and extract this out so it's at the top level and get rid of this function, we can now see the app works, right? So we're obeying by the rules of the uh, rules of hooks, and this is extremely important. This is extremely simplified with the help of the linter plugin, which by default is installed with Create React App. But if you go into a workplace and they don't have this installed, which is in the which is the case for a lot of companies that, especially some that I have worked at, then either a add the plugin to make sure that this issue is addressed or B, simply go ahead and make sure that you have these two rules in mind when you go ahead and create your React hooks because it will, if you just 
continue to try and use the app it will cause unexpected bugs now something to read on this page that i would recommend go to the react docs straight after this lesson go ahead and check out the rules of hooks and i want you guys to go ahead and give this a thorough read okay so this is a very interesting read if you need to install the plugin you can do the npm install or yarn add uh, ESNM plugin react hooks dash dash save dev because it's, the, it's a developer dependency and you can see it will, it will get added to ESLint. But again, if you've used Create React App, this by default is going to get included. So you want to make sure you don't do it if you've already got that. And then what they've got is a bunch of explanations that you can use. This is actually a very clear explanation. But the main point here is to show that the first render. And so imagine we have four different calls, a use state, use effect, use state and use effect. The first render for the component is going to be identical to the second render. So everything is fine. But then what they show is they show if we were to go ahead and have a conditional piece of logic inside, then it would go ahead and skip the second hook. And then you see it breaks the call order. So now it thinks that this one is two and this one is three. When in reality, this one was three and this one was four. And that would cause some unexpected issues to happen because you've got dependencies. For example, a variable may be used in the next call. Yeah. And that's going to break the current flow. Now, let's think about this one more time. I just want to go ahead and explain this so it's crystal, crystal clear. So imagine we had const name and we had set name equals use state. So let's go ahead and say use state. And then imagine this name was sunny. Okay. And now imagine we had another variable called um, student and we said set student and the we you do use state. And because um, hooks are simply functions, all you can do here is you can actually initialize one with another one because there is a certain call order to this. OK, so this is actually completely valid. So this won't error out. So if we go here and we go over to our plugin. So let's go ahead and check our app. And now what we can see is you see that there's no error. Everything seems fine. And but what we can do, however, is if we went ahead and in introduced um, an example here, we could say if, and let's just say if there was some form of conditional here, even if it was true, right? So it doesn't matter. I'm just doing a very dummy simplified explanation here. But if we were to put a, um, a conditional here, now think about what would happen. You see there's a strike through on name. Right, because name is conditionally met, which means that it may not get hit. So if we save it, React immediately says, oh no, you're breaking the rules of hooks. Again, it fails on a restricted global level. So that's actually a sort of like basic level because this variable is hasn't got scope. And two, it's actually gonna break because this may never get called. Okay, so it breaks the rules of hooks. So that's another way of simplifying it. Um, but these are the two important rules that we must abide by when we're using hooks so let's go over those one more time we have only cool hooks such as use state use effect as examples at the top level okay so at the top level like we have here um, so this means that you don't want to go ahead and call hooks inside of loops conditions or nested functions always use them at the top levels of your react function uh, by following the rule you're ensuring that you are calling the uh, different react hooks in in the same order every single time a re-render occurs OK, by following this rule, you're going to ensure that everything is going to be in the same order or the same call order every time the component re-renders. That's very, very important. OK, and that allows React to, co to correctly preserve its state in between those use state and use effect calls. So you see, like the example that I just showed you before, it allows it to correctly preserve the state between the calls. OK, so that's ex extremely, extremely important. OK. The second rule that we spoke about is don't call hooks from regular JavaScript functions. OK, so you don't want to call hooks from regular JavaScript functions. They either have to be a React functional component, such as this one, or from a custom hook, which we're going to build ourselves in the upcoming lesson. So I hope you're excited for that. OK, so this was the rules of hooks. It's a little bit tricky, but the benefit here is that you actually have a beautiful plugin which is going to spot the errors for you. However, it's just very important to know because it gives you that extra understanding of React that you may never understand elsewhere. And also when you go into a production environment and if say if they didn't have the plugin installed, you would run into a lot of unexpected errors. So it's very, very important that you understand and get a good foundation. We always talk about having a good foundation. Again, this is no exception 
you should understand the rules of hooks if you're going to use them all right with great power comes great responsibility guys that's the end of this lesson guys i hope you found that useful and in the next lesson we're going to be talking about how you can go ahead and learn the use effect hook so you saw it being used in this um, example today we're going to dive into that next lesson and the use effect hook is so damn powerful because it replaces all of the class life cycle methods that we see in class-based components and it allows us to do the same thing but in a much simpler fashion in functional components and it's the one reason why now we can actually replace everything with functional components it may seem tricky at the beginning but we're going to break it down and we're going to get there together so i will see you guys in the next lesson peace and